has never changed. As its ruthless crackdown of Hong Kong demonstrates once again, China is no closer to democracy today than it was in 1989 when tanks confronted pro-democracy protesters in Tiananmen Square. That was Attorney General Bill Barr Thursday delivering a speech on President Trump's China policy at the Ford Library in Michigan. The administration stepping up its attacks on Beijing following the passage of a sweeping new national security law aimed at stripping Hong Kong of its autonomy. President Trump on Tuesday signed into law a bipartisan bill imposing sanctions on Chinese officials, banks, and businesses, as well as an executive order ending the special trade status that Hong Kong had enjoyed for more than two decades. Michael Pillsbury is the director of the Center on Chinese Strategy at the Hudson Institute and the author of The Hundred Year Marathon, China's Secret Strategy to Replace America as the Global Superpower. Michael Pillsbury, welcome. Great to have you back. So, you know, we've got every day, it seems, we get another, uh, some kind of action or speech or something taking aim at Beijing. Um, is this, what's going on here? What's the big picture strategy the administration is attempting to, to play out? Is it, is it to, to decouple the U.S. from China's economy? Uh, no, I don't think so, Paul. I think a lot of it is uh, campaign promises that the president made, and he himself has said that the China issue is one of the reasons, maybe even the reason, he got elected president. So obviously he needs some deliverables, he needs some to be able to show uh, results from his promises. And the Chinese have been very tough customers. Uh, there's been a big misperception that China is about to collapse, they're very weak, just tapping them on the, on the collar, you know, and have them surrender immediately. That has not been the case, Paul. They've really uh, not made the kind of concessions the president wants. It, they did do the phase one trade deal, which is extremely significant, uh, but it's not the whole uh, enchilada, as we used to say here in Washington. Okay, but that phase one trade deal is still going ahead. I guess the administration says it is. Uh, it, it, do you see it that way? Uh, yes, it's going ahead. Uh, the president has threatened to terminate it if China does not make the purchases on time that they said they would do. They've made some of those, and the other day the president highlighted one of the largest purchases of corn uh, in history. Every Thursday, these things are posted on the Department of Agriculture website. They also promised to buy energy, a lot of other things. I think Boeing airliners would be welcome. Uh, but they are not, they're behind in the schedule they agreed to. Uh, but the, the agreement's still working. Uh, phase two, the president has said he's not interested in anymore. And he's also said, I think quite significantly, Paul, that he has no plans to call Xi Jinping. So the relationship is deteriorating, but it's not uh, sort of end of the world. We still have the largest embassy in the world in Beijing, 2,300 officials, uh, with 50 agencies continuing cooperation with China. So I don't, I'm not in the group that says this is a new Cold War and we should be afraid of a world war breaking out. No, that's too alarmist. Okay. But, so you know China extremely well, and what, what, uh, one puzzle for me is – uh, why China has been moving so aggressively uh, on several fronts. Uh, and I mean, we saw, the, we saw what they did in Hong Kong, but they also had the recent skirmish at the Indian border. They've been pushing even more aggressively in the South China Sea. They have been uh, doing so on a number of other fronts, and domestically, of course, in Xinjiang and elsewhere. They've really cracked down. So why moving so fast in so many places? Uh, it's an extremely important question, Paul. They have politics just like we do. They don't have a Senate and a Supreme Court and uh, active media leaks. But they do have politics. Xi Jinping, to get elected, if you want to use that word, uh, leader, he had to move toward the hardliners. He incorporated a lot of their rhetoric, uh, the China dream, the idea that China's time has come and that China is the world leader, if not now, then in a couple of years. So this new aggressive set of moves Xi Jinping is, has made have also provoked criticism from the reformers and the people we sort of wish had more power. They've criticized him for moving too soon. In 100-year marathon, Paul, I argue that they wouldn't be doing this kind of aggressiveness for at least another five to ten years after their GDP had surpassed us. So Xi's taking a risk, but he is playing to the hardliners, and they love him. The hardline media in China is really – you know, praising she almost as a god. 
Yeah, well, it's fascinating. You say uh, in your book, and I read your book, and you said basically that uh, they don't, uh, that the strategy uh, of a rising power, smart rising power, is to bide your time, to hide yes. your true motives, and That's wait right. until and, and wait until you are as strong as the current hegemon, and then you kind of unveil everything, and and it's too late. For the for for the for the United States in this case to do anything about it, but are they have they moved too soon and, and, and provoked a backlash here in the United States that I see is maybe bipartisan pushing back against China? I'll tell you what the reformers say. They say yes, he's moved too soon, uh, and they, the, the the debate in Beijing is really over metrics. They've got a set of indicators which I describe in the book for how they measure Chinese power against American power. And the metrics are quite complicated. Uh, there's as many as 25 indicators they look at. So as they kind of celebrate their successes, whether it's supercomputers, quantum, artificial intelligence, the successful theft of American trade secrets, as they get sort of full of themselves, they push aside the reformers, which is, which is why Bob Lighthizer said the implementation of the phase one deal depends on the reformers in China. Well, now that's in question if these hardliners are going to run wild. So a lot depends, Paul, on how much we push back. All right. Yeah, all right. Michael Pillsbury, thanks so much. Fascinating uh, uh, viewpoint. All right, Shalom. I right, see I heard it. Man, you know, um, death of America's trade secrets. You know, uh, president of the American Corporation talking about scrapping phase two of the trade negotiations with China. All right, so... We got we got tensions right now. It's kind of like a silent war, you know, uh, over over uh, you know strength of economies. It's pretty much like an arm wrestle. With China, you know, uh, with their gross domestic product has surpassed the United States, and the uh, you know the GDP there. So let's get into this article. Um, without further ado, it says uh, China threatens retaliation after U.S. orders closure of Houston consulate. All right, so pretty interesting article. Um, China on Wednesday condemned what it what it called an unprecedented escalation by the U.S. and threatened to retaliate after it was ordered to close the Chinese consulate in Houston. This is, yeah, Houston, Texas, right? Uh, Chinese Foreign Minister spokesman Wang uh, Wenbin said in a daily news briefing that the government had been told without warning Tuesday to close the consulate. He said the consulate had been operating normally Tuesday and called the alleged move an unprecedented escalation, the South China Morning Post reported. China demands the U.S. revoke the wrong decision. Now, if the U.S. went ahead, China would take necessary countermeasures, Wang said. In a statement sent to Fox News, State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortigas confirmed the directive and said it was issued to protect American intellectual property and Americans' private information. The U.S. will not tolerate the PRCs, which is a, um, <clears throat> a Republic of China's violations of our sovereignty uh, and intimidation of our people, just as we have not tolerated the People's Republic of China's unfair trade practices, theft of American jobs, and other egregious behaviors, he added. President Trump insists on fairness and res uh, reciprocity in U.S.-China relations. So... You know, I mean, this is crazy, y'all. <sighs> Documents were burned inside the consulate's courtyard Tuesday evening. KPRC TV in Houston reported. So they just burning documents. Um, so the building, they, they set a building on fire, man, inside of the Chinese uh, uh, consulate in Houston. <laughs> they said you could just smell the paper burning. A witness told the station, but all the firefighters were just surrounding the building. They couldn't go inside, so they pretty much was they, they probably pretty much was just told to just stand there and let it burn, you know. So the U.S. asked China to close Consulate General in Houston in 72 hours. This is a crazy move. Uh, Hu Zhenjin, editor in chief of the Global Times, wrote on Twitter. Wow. Okay, KPRC reported that the consulate was ordered to close by Friday, along with a compound where many consulate employees live, citing police sources. Beijing called the alleged eviction 
a violation of international law, according to Reuters. All right, coming out of 2nd Ezra 16, as I believe it pertains to the situation taking place between America, which is Babylon the Great, China, which is basically Asia, you know, Egypt and Syria, self-explanatory. So it says, uh, woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia, woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Beware, beware your children and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. A sword is sent upon you and who may turn it back. A fire is sent among you and who may quench it, man. Plagues are sent unto you and what is he that he may drive them away? May any man drive away an hungry lion in the wood or may anyone quench the fire in stubble when it hath begun to burn, may one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that could drive them away, man? So, I mean, right there, verse 8, you know, it's talking about plagues, man. You know, uh, plagues are sent unto you in verse 5. And what is he that may drive them away? You know? Fire sent among you, who may quench it? You know, a sword. That's war. You know? Um, continuing on, verse 9. A fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? Verse 10. He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? You know, you know when you, hear, when you see the lightning... You know, you can't you can't control where it come from. You can't stop it in its course. You know, who should not fear that? You know, you don't know where that lightning going to land. You know, he, he shall thunder and who shall not be afraid. When that thunder go off, man, people are afraid. It says in verse 11, the Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence. You know, uh, verse 12, the earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. It's talking about all those lands. Uh, let's see, lands, you know, Babylon, America, Asia, Egypt, and Syria. It's a lot going on. It said the earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep. Um, man, uh, Alaska just got hit with a, um, with a, they, they, they downgraded it from an 8.0, but it was a 7.8. Uh, earthquake that just hit Alaska overnight, middle of the night, and uh, they they issued a um a tsunami warning. You know, you know the earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. The sea ariseth up with waves from the deep. You know, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fish thereof also, before the Lord and before the glory of His power, for strong is His right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. You know, so, you know, just, just look at this. Look at this scripture, man, and look at what's going on. Let me show y'all this earthquake real quick. All right, so here we go. Um, magnitude 7.8 earthquake. As I just mentioned, it was downgraded from an 8.0. I guess the, the USGS, they got this rule where they can't uh, report uh, 8.0 earthquakes. But it's right here in the uh, Bering Sea, you know. Um, yeah. So, like I say, they issued a, um, a, a tsunami warning, you know. So, this, is, this stuff is taking place. You know, Alaska... Is, is American territory, you know? So, you know, once again, you know, the scripture says, you know, earthquakes and, and uh, you know, waters, you know, ruin and, hey, man, there's a lot of tension taking place, you know, between these nations, especially between America and, and China right now. So that's Asia. So, I mean, it is what it is. All right, so... um. 
just uh, wanted to give y'all some scripture to, to go with this. And uh, hopefully this lesson was edifying. All right. Um, Shalom to the hopefully lack. I'm going to say Kwame Yasharala. Rock a thumb.